of education because judges keep throwing the book at them. See, there's something wrong when a society seems to incarcerate before it educates when inmates can't vote. But their mass incarceration rates when the elections for senators kind of makes almost everyone locked up a political prisoner in the eyes of citizens or civil servants in cahoots of corporate criminals all cashing in on crime. Now, who's going to prosecute that? Well, we've already started to act by laying these corporate cops on their billionaire backs. And we may not have millions of dollars, but we have millions of misguided minds misinformed about the prison system. And so we're going to teach the world about prison proliferation at the expense of education and violence prevention programs because it's time to tell the government that they can no longer have fun incarcerating our daughters and sons because day by day and one by one, we're going to make sure that crime really doesn't pay. Anyway. So check it, guys. I got a couple of pieces I'm going to share, but I did ask if it was possible for you all to bring some things to write with, because I think it's important that we lead with some tools that we can use to help empower us on, on a daily basis. And I'm going to take some questions. I got two more poems I'm going to share with you all, and we're going to call it a night. Are we good? Yes. yes. So I think it's, it'd be wrong of me to start talking about how we can be great and do great things with our, and you can maybe um, wear, whatever you use to take notes, it's all good, right? Um, for me to talk about greatness and doing great things and blah, 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 and not give some actual concrete steps of how we can actually do that. I wrote a book uh, which is entitled Grow Towards Your Greatness, 10 Steps to Living Your Best Life. 10 Steps to Living Your Best Life. And you can buy it on Amazon. Yes, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, wherever books are sold, audios, whatever, it's all good. Grow towards your greatness. But in that book, I take grow and I break it down into a little bit of, a, of an acronym. And I want to share this with you. And always ask yourself, what am I doing to grow every single day? So the first letter of grow is what? G. It's G, right? Check it out. G is very simple. G stands for give. Everybody say give. give. Say it like you mean it. Give. give. If we want to take our community back, if we want to really uplift ourselves, every single one of you in this room has to ask yourself, what is the quality and the quantity of my giving? Because everybody can give something. Too many of us think about giving in terms of money. But giving is very simple. It's all about serving. If you have a parent or guardian at home who's working three jobs and you're the older person, you could be giving of your time by helping your younger siblings with their homework, maybe volunteering to help pick them up from school. If you're a religious person and you're in your church, your mosque, or synagogue, volunteering by helping with cleaning up, passing out stuff, maybe walking through your community picking trash off the street, off the street. That's real. You see, one of the ways we lose is when people convince us that we can't do anything. Like Malcolm said, when people convince you that you never did anything, you think you can never do anything. But Dr. King said everybody can be great because everybody can serve. So when you wake up in the morning, think about what you're doing, however small, to serve your community. They say that service is the rent that we pay for the space we occupy on this planet. And some of us know that we're behind on our service. We're so caught up in me, 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 that we forget how to give to other people. Wayne Dyer said, the more you give to your community, the more it's going to give to you. However, the more you take from your community, the more it's going to take from you. So let's think about how we can be better givers. As you can tell from my name, Ome Kongo, Luhaka, Wazibenga, I was born in a very far away place called Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, well, that is where I was born. Uh, my name, however, comes from Congo because that's where my parents are from. But because I have this name, growing up in the 80s and 90s, remember Tarzan and all that nonsense? I don't even have to say you remember Tarzan because it's a new one every 10 years. Uh, but people hated Africans. And everybody in this room, I got it, we got it from everybody. They would call us all types of names, beat us up in school, my older brother shot in the eye with one of those metal BB guns, and all of these types of things. So 
So we grew up hating our community, but rather than continuing to hate it, we gave back. And we opened dance schools, and we opened community programs. Now we have over 400 kids in our program right there in that same neighborhood, teaching some of the kids of our groups. Right? Because we decided not to turn our back on our community, but give back to it. So think about what you can give. Now, once we give, so you got that written down, you got that in your head somewhere, once we do that, then we move on to this other thing we call release. Everybody say release. Release. Say it like you mean it, release. Release. You gotta learn, people. You gotta learn, family. You gotta learn to let it go and to let them go. Let's start with let it go. How many of y'all have ever had somebody hurt your feelings? Raise your hands. Now watch this, watch this. Now raise your hands high. Anyone ever hurt your feelings? Okay, now watch this. Now put your hands down. How many of y'all are still mad that they hurt your feelings? Raise your hands. See that? See that? You see, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Some of the youngest folks in here still got their hands up. This is what, some still got their hands up, got two hands up. Now look, this is what I mean, y'all. You cannot be successful if you try to move forward with hate in your heart. It doesn't work. So you have to learn how to forgive. Forgive. Forgiving. It's made up of two words, for and giving. It means for giving yourself permission to move forward. You have to use your past if you want to achieve your greatness. You have to use your past as a place of reference, not a place of residence. Don't live there. Let it motivate you to go forward. I forgot the names of most of my bullies, except one. But I for everyone else, I don't remember who they are. Because I can't move forward if I keep their hate in my heart. You heard of Nelson Mandela? 27 years in prison. Where did he go when he first got out of jail? Not to McDonald's. Like, I could really use a burger right now. I haven't had a cheeseburger in like 30 years. He went to the house of his prison guards to let them know that he forgave them. Because he knew he couldn't move forward. So people that hurt you, said negative things about you, learn to let it go so you can grow. You see, we trick ourselves. Forgiving is never about the other people. Forgiving is for you. Some of y'all been, been hurt by people who aren't even alive anymore. Or ain't even thinking about you. They're like at the club right now doing like a two-step, like not even thinking about you, but you still carry that. So you have to do what it takes to let it go. Now, once you do that, once you let it go, you have to learn how to let them go. What does that mean? It means you have to get rid of people who are no good for you. I'm talking about your friends, maybe your spouses. I just, look, hey, hey, I gotta keep it real, man. Hey, this is real talk. I wasn't brought up here to be like, you know, sugarcoat. Some of y'all are with me, but you don't need to be with. And, and, and some people are like trying to get rid of you, and you won't let them get rid of you. <laughs> They're like, nah, I want to break up. You're like, no, we're not leaving. What? What do you mean? I don't want to leave. Hey, if they don't want you, move on. Keep it moving. You tell, you, that person is taking up the space of somebody who wants you. It's like Oprah said, it's not my job to make you want me. So if people can't see the greatness that's in you, let them bounce. Let them keep stepping. And I said earlier, you are a direct reflection of your five closest friends. So if you're surrounded by five friends who want to go to college, chances are you're going to go to college too. Or five friends who, who just want to graduate high school with the best grades they can get. You surround yourself with that, you're going to get that. You know, maybe in some situations, we pull our pants up, we pull our grades up. I don't know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you got to dress like where you want to go, not where you are. You got to be future oriented. You got to be future oriented. How many of y'all want to make money? Okay, all of us, right? Okay, double hands. Some of y'all wish you had three hands right now, okay? Here's a tip. You want to learn something? You're going to make within $5,000 of the people you associate with the most. That's a fact. So you want to make $5,000, you can't hang around people that make $5, right? So my mentor, one of the guys who trained me, his name is Les Brown, right? He, I uh, ever heard of that? So, yeah, he deserved. That's right, that's yeah, He, like, trained me. 
You know when he speaks in America, he gets $25,000 an hour? Yep. 50 Gs if you got to go overseas? Yep. Now you think I want to hang with him or someone who ain't trying to do something with their life, right? So look, guys, seriously, make a list. Not now. Some of y'all might be sitting next to your five person friend and realize just now they shouldn't be one of my five person friends. Real talk. And I'm not just talking to the students. I'm not just talking to the students. So, but look, if you're trying to do your best, People are either bringing you up or they're bringing you down. That's right. There is no middle ground. No middle ground. So you're not like, we kind of hang out. They kind of motivate me. Doesn't work like that. Negativity and positivity can't occupy the same space at the same time. We all know. You all know that, uh, we all know multiplication, one times one is? A negative times a positive is a? Can't work, it's negative. So start surrounding yourself with people who will motivate you. If you don't believe in yourself, surround yourself with people who believe in you so their belief can carry you until you can believe it yourself. When I was in the seventh grade and didn't know my history, I repeated my seventh grade year. I had 35 grades on my report card. 27 of them were S. Because we had gym, I, I lost. I passed gym. But like, <laughs> everything else, I didn't care. So I had to repeat that year. Learn more about my history. Learn about how proud I should be as a person of African descent. I graduated that same school as a member of the National Honor Society. The school didn't change, I changed. I read more. Surrounded myself with people who motivated me more, started listening to the elders and my parents more, and then I changed. So let go of people who aren't present. And the last thing I'm going to say on release, here's a question. And this is, I'm always scared to ask this question because people who are very young usually raise their hand and say yes to this question. So I'm afraid to ask it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How many of y'all in this room have a social media page? Raise your hands high. <laughs> This is why I'm scared to ask the question. Now look, don't be, thank you. But it's like, really you're in the fourth grade and they're like, <laughs> So, here's the thing. You guys need to know this now. You see, because people my age and older, we have a benefit that y'all don't have. We can lie about our past. We can say, I never did that. I never said that. I never stole. I never disrespected my teacher. But now y'all got social media. Y'all put it up proudly, like every single day. <laughs> or you got friends up there putting up pictures every single day. But you know what? That stuff is going to follow you forever. Forever. Yes. Like four plus ever equals forever. <laughs> like it's not going anywhere. And look, whether you like it or not, jobs you're applying for, yep are gonna pull up your pages. Yep. Yep. Colleges you're applying for, are gonna pull up your pages. You're running for political office, they're gonna pull up your pages. Yep. And here's the thing guys, two things you need to understand about that. Nothing ever gets deleted. Whatever you upload from your phone, for those who know technology better than I do, it goes to five different satellites before it ends up on your page. So you can delete it from your page, you can delete it from your phone, but it's still there waiting to be somewhere. And like I said, five closest friends, if your friends on Facebook are racist, then you're a racist. If your friends on Facebook are homophobes, you're a homophobe. If they're anti-Semitic, you're an anti-Semite. If they hate Muslims, you hate Muslims. If you didn't hate these groups, why would you surround yourself with them? And so you could be that person that never says anything, but jobs are going to look you up and say, why are you hanging with these, why are these racist guys posting stuff on your page? Why are you clicking like? Why are you clicking retweet? So you all got to start cleaning up your social media pages. Because it will fall in. It will fall in. So that's you got to let it go. I only surround myself with people in my company called upstanders, people who stand up and don't buy stand. So I only surround myself with upstanders. And I don't block anybody. So people talk trash, they give me death threats. But my friends, they're not, they don't represent that. So you got to remember that. I'm going to move on. You had a question? No, it was just a joke. Oh, no, after. Yeah, after, after, after. I'm not, after, you know, we do that after school. So check it out. Now, I said give, I said release. What's the next letter? O. It's O. O stands for overcome. Everybody say overcome. Overcome. You, if you 
want to reach your greatness, family, you have to learn to overcome your fears. You have to learn to overcome your fears. 95% of the things you worry about will never happen. But we allow fear to paralyze us. Fear present, prevents us from applying to jobs, asking somebody out on a date, starting a business, going back to school. I learned that fear means three things. The first one, I don't like. Some people say fear means face, I'm sorry. Forget everything and run. I don't like that. Forget everything and run. Some people say it means face everything and react. That's cool. I like that. That works. Face everything and react. But the last one I really like is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. We get so caught up with mind games. We are not afraid to apply to a school. You know, I've studied at Harvard, Princeton, Morehouse, MIT, Georgetown, Tufts University, University of Maryland, uh, schools overseas. I've been at all of these schools, these, these great schools, they call them, right? And uh, I've never been intimidated by any of these guys. You know why? Because none of these guys lived what I lived through. They ain't seen what I've seen going up through the crack epidemic and the gang wars and the drug wars and all of that. So how am I going to even compare myself with them? I'm sitting there next to kids who are kids of presidents of countries or kids of ambassadors and all of these guys. And we think because it's Harvard and Princeton, like these guys are some like unearthly individuals. Not they're just human beings. A lot of them read a lot of books, but you lived a lot of life. So it's like, why are you going to compare yourself with them? That's how I was able to get through all of these schools. Because I knew, I was, as Oprah said, I'm running a one-person race. So I ain't worried about the next man. I ain't trying to keep it with the Joneses. You don't even know where the Joneses are. You know what I'm saying? Who are the Joneses? You know, it's like, you don't know them. Do you. Do you. Do you. False evidence appearing real, guys. Stop being scared. Stop being scared. Now, once we do that, we can move on to this thing we call W, which is when. Everybody say when. 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 Win. Come on, say it like you mean it. Win. win. You have to believe that you'll win if you don't give in. We are sitting in this room right now because of slave rebellions from 1708. We're sitting in this room right now because of many people believe one day we would win. Even if there were sacrifices that they wouldn't live to see. You are sitting in this room representing somebody's dream representing somebody who lived through a nightmare so that you can have the drink. Take that seriously. Don't take it for granted. So we say give, release, overcome, and win. It spells out grow. You see, life is about growing through experiences, not just going through them. You can't sleepwalk through life. Dr. King said many of us die at 25, and don't get buried till we're 65, 75, 85, 95, 105. You know why? Because after the age of 25, we'll never do anything meaningful for the rest of our lives. Wow. I don't believe that has to be the case for any of us. That's right. If we're committed to reaching our greatness, then you have to work every day. You have to work hard. You have to pursue your dreams. Is this making sense to you all? Yes. Yes. I believe yes. at the end of the day, that we have to focus on being great. And that's what this poem is about. They say that greatness is a choice, but what have you chosen? You've been frozen in time and broken in mind. For too long, the same song playing in your head, living in breath, but better off dead. But who said that you didn't have the power? Who said this is not your hour? You've been showered with a steady stream of words that kill your dreams. But since you're still breathing, then someone has lied to you, tried to deny you of your own potential inside you. If you just decide to, let no one deride you. Don't even let them get beside you as you unearth the new you. Stop listening to naysayers and decide to do you. No more pity parties, sob stories, and boo-hoos. If no one told you that you're great, then let me be the first to. If you develop the thirst to drink from face fountain, you'll develop the might to move mountains. You see, we remove tons of dirt to find one ounce of gold. So I ask you to remove tons of hurt and just uncover one ounce of your soul. You'll set yourself on a true path of excellence, getting out of your passenger seat and driving your own car. 
reaching for the moon, but maybe only landing among the stars. You see, you have greatness inside you, but you must choose to be great. Blaze a path of excellence, leaving fear in your way. All you need is already inside you. You just must believe in yourself. Grow towards your greatness and discover your true wealth. Thank you. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Can you point at yourselves and look around the room? Just look, everybody, point at yourself and look around the room. So check it. Most times, about 10% of you all usually point at your head. 90% of rooms everywhere I go, you always point at your heart first. You know what? Why? Because you're instinctively in life supposed to follow your heart. But what happens is life starts coming around. We gotta pay that rent. We gotta get that job. We gotta marry that person. Why we gotta marry that person? Why we still married to that man? Oh. Um, and, and, and we start tricking ourselves to follow our minds. But see, your mind's gonna lead you towards your fears. Your heart's gonna lead you towards your dreams. So follow your heart, guys. You have to be you because everybody else is taken. You can't be anybody else. You can only live what's inside you. You can only bring your dreams. How many of y'all have dreams, right? Hey, in your dreams, now put your hands up. In your dreams, how many of y'all are a star in your dreams? You're a star in your dreams, right? Right? How many of y'all are on the bench in your dreams? Like, nobody's on the bench in your dreams, right? If so, maybe you need to get some, some help there. But like, check it. But for real, your dreams, your dreams are a preview of what's coming, of what's supposed to come for your life. But then you wake up and you got all these haters putting you down. And so you stop dreaming and you start going with the flow, being like everybody else. You were meant here to pursue your greatness. Be proud of your culture. You're sitting in this room, you come from the United States, you come from a country outside of the United States, or your parents do, be proud of that culture. You speak in English or French or Spanish or whatever it is, be proud of that culture. Because I'm going to tell you guys, when you move away from your culture, that's when you start to die. Part of, the reason, part of the reason I repeated my seventh grade because I didn't know my history. Yo, my full name, like I can't fit this on my on Twitter because I don't have enough characters, okay? It's like my full name is Ome Kongo Luhaka Wada Dingo Wanga Kakese Wacha Tukasa. But because, but because I wanted to fit in with everybody, I said, just call me O. And that was the beginning of the decline because I removed myself from my culture. I am named after the person who saved my grandfather's life as a child. That's back in Eastern Congo. There's history there, but I ignored it. When you move from your history, when you move from your greatness, stop calling each other N-words and B-words and all of that other type of stuff, that's when we go down. You wanna go up, you gotta know, you gotta read. You can't lead if you don't read. You can't teach what you don't know. You can't lead where you don't go. So you really have to start focusing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My whole life's a freestyle, so I apologize for that. Um, can I take questions or should I wrap it up? It's up to you. No doubt. So we're going to take one or two questions, but what I really want you all to understand is what's beautiful about what I'm talking about right now is that there are lots of people around the world who want to identify with what you're doing who identify of who you are. Because you know, one of the terms, as I start talking about words that empower us, B words and N words and how they don't, you know another word that's disempowering? Minority. I never, something in my entire life, just never felt right about that term minority. Maybe it's because I've been to 23 countries. And I've been to places where everybody looks like me. But even before I started traveling, it never felt right. You all in this room, we are part of a global majority. Part of the reason Malcolm got killed was he talked about us being part of a global majority and wanted to take our cause to the United Nations because he knew there were more people that looked like us in there who would be on our side. So maybe if you stop walking around with a minority mentality, you'll start looking at yourself as part of a global people. You start looking at yourself as part of a world culture and stop having this minimal view of just being in the United States. You're part of a global people, the originators of civilization, the people who people came, people came to our country, to our land, to study what we do. 
and then took it back to their lands. That's who you are. That's who you are. And anything else that you tell yourself you are is a product of brainwashing. It's a product of conditioning. As simple as you condition your hair with those chemicals, it's the same process going into your mind. And that's more important than what you do with your hair. That doesn't matter. It's like H. Rap Brown, Brown said, I'd rather date a woman with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, processed hair and a natural mind than a woman with natural hair and a processed mind. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't about the look. It's about what's in the head. It's about what's in the head. You guys are part of a global society. Stop looking at this nonsense on TV when you're only criminalized. Stop looking at the stuff people are going to talk about you if somebody dies. Put the killing of a black man as must-see TV on the news. We got the killing of Laquan McDonald live at 8 tonight. We got the killing of, uh, of, of, of Gardner, right? Up. This is what they do. Put it out there to keep us down, to keep us thinking that's our destiny. They keep thinking that's where we're supposed to go. But they've been other, we've, we've been to other places. We've been to greater places. And you have to study that. You have to know that, as Garvey said, if you don't know your history, you are doomed to repeat it. Or at the very least, you're going to rhyme with it. <laughs> My rap reference had to do that. <laughs> Take a question. Yes, sir. Um, and I got one more piece. Please stand up, sir. I have to. Please. <laughs> um, you're from Congo, Africa, right? Yes. Could you tell us about Leopold and what happened in Congo? King Leopold, excuse me, from Belgium. Uh, sure. So, oh, that's, this is deep. Um, I'm, can I connect it to the present? Okay, I would love for you. Oh, so, check this out. I'm going to talk about King Leopold. So, remember when I talked to you all about being informed, about knowing stuff, about what's going on in the world? This is one thing you all have to understand. Even though you may not know something that's going on in the world or know about what's happening in the global majority, you are still connected to it, whether you like it or not. You see, every action is an act, even inaction is an action. Let me give you a case in point. How many of y'all have a cell phone? Cell phone? Raise your hands. Keep raising them. PlayStation, Xbox, computer, laptop, any of these things, raise your hand. So almost pretty much everybody, right? How about anything that turns on? Yes? So check it. Chances are, if you don't know this, how many of y'all knew that those products you have are directly connected to the deaths of over 6 million people in the Congo. That because of your product, over six million people have died and been violated sexually in ways you can't even imagine. How many of y'all knew that? About five. This is what I'm talking about. People play on your ignorance. You never ask, you ever ask yourself, why does this 100 inch television cost $50 at these local stores? It's because they get them in ample supply because the materials come from war. They come from ravagery, right? And so in my country right now, my parents' homeland, people are mining gold and creating child soldiers and doing things to girls your age and younger, as young as three years old, that you can't even imagine that I won't describe here. And I've seen the consequences of this. I've lost family members who died the same day I met them when I visited Congo from a cold because they couldn't get access to medicine because they were countries at war, because people were robbing our resources for those materials. So you're always connected. How does that connect to King Leopold in the Congo? Because this is our second genocide in less than 100 years. So in the 1800s, between 1885 and 1910, we lost 10 million people because King Leopold ran the Congo. You know what the thing was back then? So, oh, you see the know. So the thing that's in your cell phones, that's making them glow and turn on, for those science chats in here, the three T's, tin, tantalum, and tungsten, and another thing called copper, and another thing called Colton. Those are the things that make your phones operate. They are the largest supply of them are in Congo. That's why we have over 27 rebel groups. Some of them have lobbyists on Capitol Hill exactly. destroying our country. Right so you can get that phone at a discount. Learn your history. If you want to learn more about that, go to racehopeforcongo.org. 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 Now, how does this relate to Leopold? Well, from 1885 to 1910, you know what? We call these things conflict minerals. You know what our conflict mineral was back then? It was rubber. Because the bicycle became popular. Because car automobiles became, they, you know, we needed rubber for these for moving vehicles, right? Congo back then had the largest deposits of rubber. So what they called it back then was red rubber. Why did they call it red rubber? Because if you didn't produce enough rubber by the end of the day, they would cut off the hands of your children and give them to you. 
and say, this is what happens when you don't work hard enough. Companies like Dunlop that 